All right, boys and girls. Same thing as last video. I'm looking at this screen because that's where my PowerPoint is. But you guys are over here. So, hey, how you doing? I hope everything's going well with you guys. Um, it is 7.15 at night. And I uh, didn't have time to record this beforehand. And the Blue Jackets play in 45 minutes. So I'm not going to make this video too long for you. But there is something we need to talk about. When we write a paper, um, or we write our nonfiction stuff, stuff we're really into, um, it is really, really important how we introduce our topic. If we don't introduce our topic well, readers are going to pick up our book and go, uh, what? And put it back down, right? They're not going to care. They're not going to be interested. And they're not going to read about our topic. When we're pros on our topic, we want to be able to hook our readers so that they want to read what we wrote. Okay? So, first things first. The beginning is what gets your attention. I have a question for you. Have you ever started a TV show, watched a couple episodes, and then just got bored with it? Or maybe there was a book that made you just feel like taking a nap, like a teacher is reading it, and you're like, Bueller, all right, I want you to answer that question really quick. Go ahead. All right, now that you're back, I've been there. I started this one show my friends wanted me to watch in college. Uh, it was called Gossip Girl, which, first of all, the fact that they wanted me to watch a show called Gossip Girl, I don't think that fits my personality too much. But I watched like four episodes of it. I was super bored. I was like, this is not something I care about. The writers didn't make me care about it. I'm over it. And my friends were like, you got to keep watching. And I was like, this is a snooze fest. I'm going to take a nap every time I watch it. So it's not worth it. Okay. So we have to grab the author or the reader's attention. Um, the best writers know how to capture your attention right away. This week, when we started reading The Outsiders in class, the first chapter, Pony Boy gets jumped, and the gang, the Soshas, show up and pull a knife on him, and they hold him to the ground and say, you need a haircut, greaser, and they, Pony Boy's like, I realized then that they could kill me. That's how the book starts, and you were definitely hooked. That house, I saw so many of you guys with your eyes on me the whole time, and you were ready to just keep going, right? So, what does the line below make you think of? I want to think this. This is the first line of a book that I read in high school, <clears throat> okay? This is the very first line of a whole chapter book. It says, once upon a time, there was a woman that discovered she had turned into the wrong person. Tell me what you think. All right, if I'm thinking about a woman that turned into the wrong person, I'm thinking like, Fiona from Shrek, right, where she was the queen and she didn't expect to be turned into an ogre. Uh, and then she got cast a spell on a witch, right? And she did not expect that. She turned into the wrong person. Or maybe this was somebody that thought they were supposed to do something their whole life. Um, and then they ended up doing that thing only to figure out later in life they needed to do something else, right? I don't know. There's so many possibilities with this quote that I'm like, I need to read on. I need to keep going. Okay? So, here's a great way to write an informational writing intro. A lot of us have a topic we are really passionate about. We know so much about that we want to teach others. And we have to draw them in. And to do that, we have to write what's called a hook. If you think about a hook, um, like on a fish, it's called a hook. Because if you write a good hook... The, the fish is stuck on it, right? And when you reel it in, it doesn't matter what the fish does, it is still stuck on that hook, okay? Um, so we have to hook our reader so that they are so stuck, it doesn't matter what happens, they're going to keep reading about our topic, okay? It grabs the reader's attention so much so that they're like, I got to know what the rest of this is about, okay? So here's a couple examples of bad hooks. These are not good hooks. If you start your book with, today, I'm going to teach you about, they're not going to be interested. I'm sorry. They're going to be like, I don't, why should I listen to you? Why? I don't care. My favorite thing in the world is, again, 
why why do they care about what your favorite thing? Maybe if it's your best friend and you tell them that, they might listen to you. But if it's like a random reader that's just picking up your book, they're going to be like, mm, good for you, dude. This book is about blank. There's no excitement in any of those, right? You see how my little Bitmoji guy is like, boo, right? You're going to get booed if you do one of those hooks, okay? So we have to be creative. I was thinking about summertime and the pool earlier. And so when I was writing my fake hooks, I was like, the pool was on my mind, right? So how to write a good hook. There's one, two, three, four, five, six different ways to write a good hook. I don't know what this little picture thing over here is. I'm sorry that that ended up on the screen. But there's <coughs> six different ways to write a good hook. The first one is to ask a question that makes somebody think. Have you ever seen how many germs are in a swimming pool? Think about that one for a second. You know how many kids, like, they, you know, go to the bathroom in the pool and it's gross, right? Think about that and then add a bunch of people in there, some sweaty guys, some people that didn't shower before they got in the pool. Maybe they went into the ocean, came back to the hotel and jumped in the pool with sand in their toes and a sea urchin in their armpit. I don't know. But they have lots of germs in there, okay? Now think about this one. There's this thing called an onomatopoeia. Remember, that's like how a word sounds. So like boo sounds like boo, right? A cow, when you say moo, that's an onomatopoeia. Or boom, when there's an explosion. Or whack, when you hit a ball, right? Those are onomatopoeias. They're words that sound like the sound. So splash. I dove into the giant pool head first. Okay, what happens next? Did you um, drown? Did you keep swimming? Did you make it up? Were you showing off for your friends, right? But splash, immediately you're like, splash what? Okay, there's some other things like dialogue, right? Last one is a rotten egg. How many of you guys have screamed that at a pool and went running, even though there was definitely a sign that said, do not run, right? No running. If you run, you're going to get hurt. So you tell your friend, last one is a rotten egg, and you take off running and you jump in the pool. I would keep reading that story because you know how many times I've done that to my friends? Or we can describe the setting and make it like sound like something that somebody wants. So right now we're in the middle of winter. Um, on my computer right now, it says it is 20 degrees outside. Not a fan. I'm thinking of summertime, post-COVID, where I could be at the pool, right? So I would describe the setting as it was a hot summer day and the sparkling Blue pool looked like the best option to cool off, right? And how many times have you guys been outside and it's hot and you like are on your way to the pool and you're like, I need to get in that pool and cool myself off because it's too hot out. So then that kind of setting, that descriptive language draws the person in. You can give them a fact that makes them go, hmm, right? Did you know that chlorine doesn't kill all the germs in a pool? It doesn't. It tries to. It, clean, it kills a lot of them. I think like 70%. That means like 30% of the germs are still just swimming around and you could get them. That's gross, okay? Uh, that would draw me in. I'd be like, uh, what do you mean there's chlorine killing, not killing germs? I thought that's what chlorine was for. All right, or you could be funny. Two friends were tanning near the edge of a pool when out of nowhere, a rather large man did a belly flop and soaked them both. First of all, if you were one of those girls, you'd be really mad, right? But... You'd be like, okay, what happens next? Because I want to hear how mad the girls are and if they're going to go yell at the belly flop man or if the belly flop man is okay because he just did a belly flop. And if you've done a belly flop on purpose or on accident, you know that does not feel good. Okay, so uh, moving on. A good hook isn't enough though, right? We have to inform our audience about what the rest of our paper is going to be about. We're going to give them a good hook we're going to tell them a little bit about our information. We're going to give them a couple facts, and then we want them to keep going. So we got to give them some facts that are going to keep them intrigued, that might keep them going on. Like, this is what you're going to learn about, right? So after you write a hook, you have to give the audience a quick idea about your topic. Your first paragraph should include three points about the rest of your paper, which is kind of like what you plan on telling the audience, and enough, enough information to get like their tongue wet a little bit, but not too much information where you just, they don't have to read the rest of the paper because they know everything that's going to happen, right? You want to give them just enough. I wrote an example about my favorite team, right? 
the Dallas Cowboys. I know you guys all love hearing me talk about the Dallas Cowboys. I wrote my favorite, or I wrote a paragraph about my favorite team. Here it is. Here's my example intro. My topic is why the Dallas Cowboys are the best team ever. How would you like to own something that was worth $5.7 billion? First of all, stop. Think about that. You would all like to own something that was worth $5.7 billion, right? So now my brain's thinking this is going to be about something that's worth a lot of money. So moving on. You could if you own the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, the Dallas Cowboys are worth $5.7 billion. That's crazy. The Dallas Cowboys are not only worth the most money, but they are the best team ever. So right here, Drew in, got my hook. Tell them what team I'm talking about, and then I give them my topic. Here, right, the Dallas Cowboys are the best team ever, right? I told them what my topic was. Even if I didn't have why the Dallas Cowboys are the best team ever, you would know down here because of what I wrote that they are the best team ever, in my opinion, right? So now I'm going to give you my three things that keep you going. The Dallas Cowboys are the best because of how many championships they have, five, how often they play on TV, and because they have one of the best stadiums in the world. True story. Okay, so here we go. Your goal today, it is your turn now. You're going to go back to Google Classroom. You're going to pull up the doc that's on there. It's going to be a blank doc for you to type your intro paragraph. I'm going to put a little thing on there. It's going to say topic. And you're going to type your topic there, and then you're going to write your intro paragraph. Okay? I want you to write your intro paragraph. Make sure you give me a great hook. Okay? Give me hooked. I want to know that I need to read this paper. I want to know what your topic is in that paragraph, right? And I need to know at least three things you're going to tell me about, three main ideas for the whole paper. Once you do that, I want you to turn it in. We're going to look at those together when we get to back, back to class next week. and. We're going we're gonna to keep going on these papers. I told you we're going to get through this unit fast. We're going to get through intro, keep finishing our body paragraphs, and then next week we're going to learn how to write a great conclusion. And we're going to have a five-paragraph nonfiction essay about something we love in about a two-week span, which is pretty cool. All right, guys, I will see you in class on Monday unless you are the blue group or the green group. Then I'll see you in class on Thursday. Um, until then, enjoy writing, have some fun, and I'll see you later.